Well, hey, welcome to Diamond Dialogue, the chat room interview show. This week's guest put, puts the geek into radio. It's Todd Whitehead. Welcome, Todd. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Oh, well, thanks for being had. I'm not, I'm not sure how that works, but sure. <laughs> I just work here. Right. That's, yeah, you just work here. So <laughs> we'll get right into it. Um, the chat handle you use is actually Todd Whitehead, which is fairly self-explanatory, but I want you to explain your other one, GnomeWise. How did you uh, come about that one? I uh, sense that it's WoW is, related. Yeah, you got it in one. Um, <laughs> my gnome rogue character uh, was named Gnomewise. And that was the handle I was using around the time I became involved with my first podcasting community, WoW Radio. So for a long time, that was my online avatar and persona was all Gnomewise. And, and the, the Twitter handle is, is the last gasping hang on to that era in my existence. Oh no, that's the, it's still it's a good name. I mean, you can't you can't be too mad about it. <laughs> yeah, it freaks people out when when you know they they know me from the internet and then meet my six foot five uh, person in person and uh, yeah, uh, disconnect. I was say I only see about a foot foot and a half of you normally. So, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I see you're you're in your your humble closet abode. <laughs> where you do all your masterful studio, work. thank studio. you very yeah. much. Sure, sure. Um, what uh, what do you do when you're not there? When you're when you're outside of your your tech realm? Well, when I'm, not, I'm not doing the online broadcast thing. I do uh, IT support for small companies, so it's it's all still very technology and computer related, just for monies. For and monies, like <laughs> in, in 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 person. Do you do anything for uh, leisure outside of the tech area? Uh, just about to resume uh, martial arts. I was uh, sidelined by an injury last August, slipped a, uh, a disc in my lower back, and that was, number one, fantastically painful. Uh, number two, takes a very, very long time to just slowly decide to heal. So next week I should actually be resuming uh, Aikido practice, which I'm looking forward to. Yeah, tons of fun there. Um, but pretty much the, the, the hobby that I spend my time on is very visible to you already because it's Alpha Geek Media. Um, right. That is, you know, has consumed my hobby hours for the last several years of my life. So outside, you know, if I'm not child rearing, husbanding, that, or working, then I'm doing something uh, Alpha Geek related usually. Oh yeah, that's that's awesome, and I, and I want to actually thank you for doing Alpha Geek Radio, which we're broadcasting on right now. A little bit, um, you know, yeah, helping helping out everything. Like it's it's awesome. I'm you know I throw you a buck a month to help you out. And I appreciate it. Then my you know throw you my quarter <laughs> basically. You know? Give it. I, I need I need coffee badly. <laughs> no, no, it's it's an excellent service that, that you do for everybody, and and, and again, well, we just we, all we want to try and make it so all this great content that this community uh, is getting so good at generating. Um, I see my job is to make that inescapable so that the stream will find you wherever you're lurking. You have no excuse not to listen to live content because it will play on your potato. Right. Uh, so you're you're so about there. Even if you have, you know, I, mean, I want people who are stuck on crappy, either bandwidth restricted or uh, bandwidth capped connections or who are just mobile and are relying on a cellular network to be able to tune in to their favorite creators when they go live. Absolutely. Because there's that, that different live experience and then that different crowd of listeners and viewers that we gather for the live show is, I think, vitally important. Um, I'm yeah. a huge proponent of the live experience because it it changes the show. If you can record something in isolation and do, you can do very high production values and you can make a very polished product, but it's not the same as something that was created when the audience was there reacting and giving you input in the moment. Yeah, absolutely. It may be, go ahead. Oh, I just said absolutely. That's totally what I see too. So I, I try to encourage as many uh, hosts as I can to do the live thing and then we got to make sure that whoever wants to listen live or watch live can. 
So yeah. we're always looking looking to knock down excuses and, and find it, you know, get it working on one just incrementally one more device. Well, and IRC is extremely available through everything and very very low impact on on data. Yep. So that's that goes a long way to help that that most of the communities are are centered around chat rooms that that exist in IRC. So well, that's I mean these are in technology terms, Internet Relay Chat and Shoutcast are prehistoric oh, technologies. Yeah. yeah, you're you're talking you know mid mid nineties at, at the latest. <laughs> right, and but because of that, they are rock solid. They are everywhere, and they developed in an era of dial-up or low-end DSL where you didn't have this embarrassment of bandwidth available, we say, oh, of course I'm streaming in 4K. Yeah, Who right. doesn't? Peasant? You're merely <laughs> 1080p? <laughs> Speak not to me. Um, yeah. Opposite end of the spectrum, but it's like, I, like Morse code. It is the only form of radio transmission you cannot block. You cannot jam Morse code. Because it is so damn simple. It is on, off. Right. Beep or no beep. Beep or no <laughs> beep. This is analogous to that of can't stop the signal. It is going to get to you. You'll be able to hear what is being said and participate in the live experience. Even on an old, old machine, on a, if you were, for some reason, stuck on a dial-up connection, you can still be in IRC and still participate live. And God, God so. forbid. <laughs> But if you are, right. we are, you are still going to be in the community. We're going to give you all the avenues to, to be there when we go live. Oh, absolutely. So you, uh, you mentioned Twitter, that your name there is still GnomeWise. But what's yep. the favorite Twitter account that you follow? Oh, God. Um, you can make me actually like, think about this. I know, I right? follow an increasingly ridiculous number of... Uh, I mean... The, the ones that I care most about are people from the, the greater Diamond Club, uh, Frog Pants, Alpha Geek community of uh, hosts and super fans. Because um, th 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 just people of like mind that we, you know, we, we already go to conventions together. We already, already hang out virtually together nearly every day. <laughs> yeah. So um, I love uh, Paul and Storm. Uh, Comedy duo from uh, Nerdtacular's past. Yeah, hilarious um, guys. They usually have something uh, witty uh, or uh, insightful to say. More often witty than insightful. True. Usually. <laughs> it can be uh, both. What? It can't be both? I, I just said it, it can be both. Yeah, uh, but it usually isn't. Nah, yeah. let's, let's be honest. Shall <laughs> we? Uh, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, as far as you know, lightening my day and, and, and giving me a laugh and uh, looking forward to what they have to say, Paul and Storm, or uh, what pop into my mind is, is the fa my favorite follow. Mm, that's awesome. So here we'll get into the real meaty questions. If you were given the superpower, you gained one one day through happenstance. What would that superpower be, and what's the first thing that you would do with it? Hmm. It would have to be, uh, I, would, I would think, the healing factor, like uh, Logan. Oh, okay, like so, uh, regeneration, essentially? Right. Um, and I'm not sure what I would do immediately with it, as far as other than uh, stop slowly dying and, and begin uh, yeah. to live as long as I care to. <laughs> um, but I, I like the healing factor because it, it is immortality with an opt-out clause. Right, right. You're, you're so, immortal, but you can still die. <laughs> I can, but I would probably have to choose to die. Right. Um, this, this side of, of a nuclear exchange or some kind of other you know, global scale annihilation. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I could say, even live one. as long as I, as I cared to, but if, if one day I realized, hey, the human brain is not designed to live this long and I'm slowly going insane or some <laughs> other, or just, or just got tired of, of life and wanted to see what lies beyond, I would have the option to go jump in a volcano. Right. And you know, no healing factor is going to help me there. Right. <laughs> uh, but as long as I stayed outside of the volcanoes and away from the nuclear testing grounds, then I could live as long as I cared to. Um, and could be useful in, in circumstances where 
you know, someone without a healing factor, like, you know, think of a nuclear accident like Chernobyl. There's, you know, there were the heroic Chernobyl divers, the guys who dove mm -hmm. into the, the contaminated water to really open release valves to um, stop a further meltdown. Right. And we're, we're dead three days later. They saved hundreds of thousands of nearby people with their actions, but they were dead three days later. Right. Yeah. Um, I could, I could volunteer for that kind of duty and say, I'll take care of it and call me next time you need me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and really nuclear explosions, If uh, which one? Uh, the Wolverine, I believe, is the one where, where that happens. Uh, he, you know, you just get down in a bunker a little bit and you can survive yeah. a nuclear explosion. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't you know, stand in front of the blast wave. Right, but, but yes. he was far from protected. <laughs> yes. No, he was crispy critter by the time that, that sequence was over. Yeah, it didn't um, look fun. Now, see, here's, here's the other question is, would you undergo the process to get the adamantium? Uh, well, see, that, that's a second power. You didn't say I could have two things. It's, no, it's not a power. It's simply a process that he underwent uh, because he had the power. Because um, anybody else would die. I mean, if that technology came about... <laughs> um, I don't know. I would have to be. I would have to seriously consider: Is this going to make me indestructible uh, to the point where my opt-out card is invalidated? Um, uh, maybe not volcano, but uh, it would true, certainly true. make accidental. It could, cer <laughs> it could certainly you know, fry my brain inside of its adamantium skull. Right, right. Well, and so you know, somebody could like chop off your head if you didn't have that, and you know, having the true. The, no, that, the I mean, that's man. why Wolverine is is the pop, is the popular hero he is because he's the great combo meal of <laughs> abilities and armor. Right. So you you can't break you you basically you merely give someone healing factors, you can still take their head. Right. You go all Highlander or vampire on them, and it's done. So well, what if his spine was indestructible? Yeah. Hmm. I can see them spitballing this in the writers' <laughs> room at Marvel, saying. Uh, well, yeah, he can heal real quick, but yeah, you, know, you, you shoot him through the head and he's just as dead. What if his skull was bulletproof? Oh, hey. <laughs> he's a man with the powers of a spider. Excelsior! Uh, you've been watching too much TMS. <laughs> nah, too much Stan Lee. Yeah, right? Oh, that's too funny. Well, in, in the same vein of, uh, you know, comic books and such, if, if you could move to any planet, real or fictional, which uh, which would it be, and what would your house be like there? Oh, uh, fictional world. Yeah, the real ones are kind of boring, but uh, there are some interesting ideas there. Well, we don't know that there's not any super exciting planets out there. We just haven't visited them yet. Yeah. So the ones we or know about them. are kind of meh. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I do kind of immediately go to uh, fictional ones. Cause right. Much more you know, a well a well described fictional world is, is a happy place to visit in your mind. Yeah. Um, huh. Future the future Earth from Asimov's robot series, the early ones, where humanity is just beginning their expansion of colonization. Gotcha. Um, so that's, that that that. For that, it's not a specific planet, but more be there when we're going out and visiting all the new places for the first time and to be able to be part of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I wouldn't give to get on a ship with warp power. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know. Bring it on. Right. Wormhole generator, uh, infinite improbability drive, whatever. Yeah. Sign me up. <clears throat> yeah, well, I mean, we do have the math to support that uh, space warping um, in order to do um, faster than light travel. Oh, well, quote unquote because you're not really traveling past in the speed of light you're moving the space around traveling you. without moving yeah right it's <laughs> but the spice is not flowing so we don't have that <laughs> as an option yet uh that's uh that's another good movie man i gotta watch it again <laughs> well um, uh the uh original movie or the uh Sifi channel editions the original movie had its pluses and minuses, and the the miniseries, I would I would probably opt for the miniseries over the original, but barely. <laughs> you know, the original. I mean, if you have you ever gone and look at the super duper extended cut? No, I I haven't seen that one. That's worth pursuing. It it is monstrously long, uh, and you have to deal with the facts, uh, the the effects coming and going because they're basically they were they inserted footage 
that didn't have final effects done, so mm. the Fremen suddenly don't have blue eyes for one scene. Right. So you have, you have to forgive conceits like that, but it tells a much more complete story. Hmm. It's still the wacky acid trip that it is. Right. Well, I read the book, too, and I mean, it was right. a long time ago, but... Um, but it, it, it's worth if you can locate the, the sci-fi channel for a while where it was playing the super duper four and a half hour cut hmm. of that one. But yeah, I, I think I, I fall on the same side that you do with uh, the slight edge to the to the more modern interpretation miniseries. They took their time. I'm, I'm becoming a massive convert to the miniseries, or as the British would call it, series. Right. <laughs> um, the idea, and we're seeing it more and more now that we're in the era of on-demand uh, and organizations like Netflix becoming the content creators. The people telling the story saying, "Okay, how many episodes do we need in service of the story? Not how do we stretch this out to twenty-three episodes because all series are tw all seasons are twenty-three episodes long." Right, and it doesn't have to be twenty-four or forty-two minutes. Right. You can, you know, how, how much time do we need right. to tell it right? Exactly. And the, and the BBC has been doing that for eternity, and they keep routinely churning out amazing stuff. Right. Um, which we then, you know, refilm and, and hey, House of Cards. Yeah. And, um, yeah. <laughs> and what's Grace Point? Uh, it's a long oh, history office. of us saying, hey, let's, uh, let's, let's Americanize it. We're yeah. going to use the same actor. It's still David Tennant, uh, but we're going to make it American. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> but. I'm really happy to see these, you know, you know, Daredevil recently released just as many, just the, the number of episodes they needed to tell their complete story arc. Yeah, more I'm about less. three episodes in, um, so. Yep. No I, I'm, I'm but it's good so far. slowly, I'm, I'm going, I've watched only the first episode so far. Today yep. is episode two day. Try, trying to gingerly stretch it out. <laughs> so uh, which one is AKA Jessica Jones next? I forget which is the next in line. I don't see. I, that's where I have a trouble when they release them all. I don't remember which ones were which. <laughs> you know, right. like I just remember the story, which is I'm, I'm, probably a good thing actually. I'm I'm really watching this with interest because Marvel is essentially attempting to duplicate in the on-demand space what they've done on the big screen. And they should be able to. We hope so. If if the uh, they, but if they're able to do it at a lower budget, but enjoy the same success they did with Avengers, where with Avengers they had to do these multi-million-dollar, huge tentpole films right. from all these different characters. You had uh, Incredible Hulk, Iron Man's one, two, twenty-seven, <laughs> um, and Thor. All the movies that that led to the Avengers. They're doing that. They're replicating that in the smaller screen of Netflix with Daredevil, a.k.a. Jessica Jones, uh, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist, leading to a movie, The Defenders. Right. So that's exactly the same roadmap, oh, just on your television instead of the big screen. And they're already I hope doing they're... it with uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is an interesting other, other creature. It's a second storyline, basically. It's, it's more it's like knitting together bits and pieces from the universe uh, I'm curious to see if there's any kind of tie-in attempt with the Netflix properties or if they kind of leave them separate because um, it's all you know supposed to be the Marvel Cinematic Universe umbrella right but uh, I just, I, I'm wishing them wild success with this effort simply because I want more studios to take that chance yeah. To yeah. say, hey, it, it's worth our time to produce in, in cooperation with one of these on-demand services because they can serve a smaller and smaller niche and not have to worry about, okay, we're not getting 45 million viewers a week anymore, cancel the show. Right, exactly. It's, we got 12 million via streaming and we spent less making the movie, we took home bank, we're still in business, let's make some more. Right, and every and new that, person that signs up for the service is going to probably watch this movie, and you know, yep. for all eternity. Right, but it just it, it allows every audience to be served. So people who love you know Agatha Christie style mysteries, which I do not like, will get exactly what they want. They'll get multiple series in that style. People who love reality television. Well, they already get all they need, so screw them. <laughs> uh, 
but whatever little you know uh, fan niche exists, as long as it's of a, a, a reasonable critical mass of size, can get their stories created for them. And I think that's the beauty of the system we're moving into here is we'll get all kinds of really high quality content for all kinds of audiences and everyone will be happy. Absolutely. <laughs> no, that's, that's pretty awesome. Speaking of high quality content, where did the uh, name Alpha Geek Radio com come from? I mean, the radio part is pretty easy, but... Oh, that one I slaved over for weeks. What are you talking about? <laughs> Alpha Geek wrote itself. Oh, I mean, <laughs> Uh, it's, it doesn't feel word. complete. It's, it's not, like there's Neil something Patrick missing Harris. there. I need more. <laughs> um, no, it was it, just from the term being bandied about, or being an alpha geek. It is a, a play on the concept of the alpha male, right? Which is the diametric opposite <laughs> to what you consider when you think of a geek or a nerd, right? You know, the the the, the, the much played upon stereotype is the you know, 90 pound weakling being bullied by the alpha male. So it's saying, no, we are running things now. Yeah. <laughs> so move over alpha male, alpha geeks are in charge now. So That's pretty awesome. we are, we are all alpha geeks in our, in our respective uh, houses. Right. I mean, you don't call me for video streaming advice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, don't, uh... Yeah, don't sorry. count that out. <laughs> I um, learn, I am learn, learning something new every day. Absolutely, but... Yeah, definitely, I totally get what you mean, though. Well, you know, in, in the same vein, did you ever think the site would be as popular as it is now when you started, or was it just kind of a, oh, let's do this thing, you know? It, in it, its initial version was a reaction to WoW Radio being too monotone. So it was, it was World of Warcraft Radio. Right. And all they cared about was WoW-related content, which in its heyday, when, and this is when WoW was brand new, and in the early days we could actually have in the interface a player, so you could actually play the stream right inside the game. Oh, the API cool. got changed later to lock that out because it was too, much, too easy to exploit ah. and you could hook in from the outside. Um, and... I got bitten by the bug in a big way. Um, I had had an occasion to travel to the UK, met Total Biscuit, who was running the station at the time, and he is very passionately into, at the time, just podcasting and live radio streaming. Now he's gone on to you know, fame, fortune, and two million subscribers on YouTube, so he's riding, riding that wave. Right. But it's because he really loves it. And he, he, he was the one who infected me with this concept of it lowering the bar to entry so that everyone has the opportunity to find their audience and the opportunity to say what they want to say on a topic. And anyone who wants to tune in is welcome. It is, it is a very egalitarian platform we have here. Um, so... Got bitten with that bug. <laughs> and you know, across doing shows, um, it became clear to me very early on that I am, I am a middle-of-the-road pod podcaster as far as hosting, creating content. There are you know, people all around me that do this apparently effortlessly <laughs> right. and way better than I will ever be. Yes. Yeah, um, see, so Tom Merritt. <laughs> yeah, you think. Um, so you have your little male ego moment of, aww. <laughs> but then you look around and I say, well, but I do this behind the scenes stuff really well. Right. Um, I can design systems. Um, so I you know, the first got started with the 24 7 stream on WoW Radio, where I started getting into the server side of things and the network side of things and wanted to spread that beyond just World of Warcraft. So when we closed down uh, WoW Radio, I created the platform of, hey, geek or nerd related content, take it all comers. Wow. And Alpha Geek Radio was born. Yeah, that's, that's really awesome. <laughs> Tons of fun. Um, I had no, no idea where I was heading with it. Um, but now you, you see before you how far it has come. 
Right. <laughs> oh, that's that's awesome. Um, well, you know, given that part of things, um, that may answer this. The the other question that I have is: Is there any rhyme or reason to what's on what channel for um, for, for the, the the website? Uh, currently, it is kind of higgledy piggledy, um, just because it grew very organically. Um, it started out as a single channel. <laughs> My wife is fanning me with, with cool room air. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm good. So the station began single channel. And so one audio stream. Uh, and that was pretty much it. And began aggressively pursuing content creators. And... Not a whole lot of response for a while. And then I think everyone got together, had a meeting. There was a memo <laughs> that I missed. And they all said, okay, we're all going to sign up with Todd today. Uh, so I get this flood of applications and wound up with lots of conflicts as far as when people wanted to be live. So very rapid fire had to throw together two more uh, radio automation servers to have enough breathing space for the various shows to be live simultaneously when they needed to be. And so three seemed to be the, the magic number to give the most flexibility. Sure. But it's, and so the way it stands right now, it's simply based on when people wanted to do their show live, landed them on the channel with that opening. I've been looking at mapping out, make, bringing a little more sense and division to it, like certain kinds of shows on certain channels. Um, that's going to be a fun spreadsheet to, to work out. Oh, yeah. That's... Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm looking towards you know, separating them by genre, so we'll have all the general talk or technology related on one channel, um, video games, groups together on another. We'll, we'll see what, what form it takes. But it all, it all kind of flies out the window when there's a scheduling conflict. You're just trying to, you're trying to get somebody their, their slot live. Right. Uh, and I, want, I always want them their repeats to play on the channel that they're live on so there's not confusion on the day so if they're broadcasting live on channel one and then one of their repeats comes up on channel two then there's two identical show badges on the site and people come to tune in it's like uh oh, uh yeah. which one even though one has a big red live button on it we're, we're talking right. about users here yeah so <laughs> we're trying to make, make it as foolproof as possible no that's that, that i guess that makes a lot of sense you know knowing that you really just started with one channel and it kind of grew from there. But yeah, it, it seems to work out pretty good so far. Yep. And I, just, I just jumped in with both feet and did three video channels right out of the gate. Because yeah. Well, you just, learned better. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I can be taught. Right. <laughs> well, thanks for joining me. Uh, people can find you on Twitter at GnomeWise or on, yep. online at AlphaGeekRadio.com or AlphaGeekVideo.com, uh, right? Or do you, you also have AlphaGeekMedia.com. I guess it all kind of goes to the same... They all point to the same place for the moment. Um, and if any of you out there um, get bit with the same bug that I did, and you want to try your hand at uh, live streaming audio or video or, or just podcasting, we have the Podcast Incubator uh, on Alpha Geek Radio. We provide free hosting for podcasts, free live stream audio and video now. Uh, if you want to try it on for size in a you know safe environment with a... We're just now building a forum community for exchanging information amongst uh, fledgling podcasters and streamers. Come on over. Just send an email to info at alphageekradio.com, and I will get you set up. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm running on right now is you know <laughs> doing the, the development podcasting on Alpha Geek Radio. So. And here we are. Right, exactly. <laughs> Share with others. Exactly. Well, thanks for, for doing that and for being on the show for, with me. Um, Anytime. Anything else that you wanted to plug in there, or is that pretty much everything? Uh, I've just come over and try a new show. Uh, come to alphageekradio.com, click on the Shows tab, scroll down the ever-expanding list, and if you see something you've not tried before that seems interesting, check them out. Uh, the whole top, half, top three quarters of the list is all the live, and then we have a small section at the bottom of people who do just pre-record it. Um, who appear on the 24-7 repeat server. But they're all uniformly passionate, great content creators. There's all kinds of fun stuff in there. 
Um, or you can just try to tune into one of the streams randomly someday and just see what's on, see what catches your fancy. Yeah, there's, there's always good content on there. We try. <laughs> well, it's been a very fun interview, and uh, you can watch more of these questionings if you want to watch more of them at tinvec.com slash dd. There's RSS and iTunes subscriptions there if you like what you see and want to subscribe. So we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>